plagiarism refers to copying text by somebody else or ideas by somebody else without appropriately acknowledging it. And citing is the way of acknowledgement. So plagiarism is defined as one form of academic fraud. And if you are caught plagiarizing, then you might be uh, failing a course. Or if a professional researcher is, fail is plagiarizing, then they might be fired. Sometimes uh, some politicians have plagiarized part of their theses and that leads to a scandal. To avoid plagiarizing, it's useful to understand academic writing conventions and citations. So the academic writing convention is that we have uh, three different kinds of text. We have here the text entrepreneurs are seldom motivated solely by profit, but are like likely to have other goals as well. And this is uh, an idea written by Syed and Marx. We know that it's from Syed and Marx because here's the citation of Syed and Marx's work. Then uh, there is a quote. This is original word of Syed and Marx. So we are taking an idea and then we're taking words. And then uh, we have original thinking by the student or actually teacher who wrote this example. So it is important to differentiate between these three things idea taken by somebody from somebody, text taken by from somebody, and then your own thinking, own analysis of what other people have right. The citation practices that we have is that we have basically two citation practices. We have citation, typically it's in parentheses, author's name, comma, year. And this is when you credit an idea. So you have your own text that expresses some other person's idea and then you have the citation and the end. If you take text, then you enclose that text in the quotation marks, you include the citation and then importantly you include the page number. The page number is there so that someone who reads your writing can check if the quote is, is accurate, if it actually is present in the paper. And then at the end you have the full reference and the reference list. There are then uh, two different styles of citation in the, uh, the APA style that most academic journals in management use. There is uh, what we call parenthetical and narrative citation. So parenthetical citation means that there is uh, some, uh, the, the citation is fully in parentheses and then it's not a part of the sentence. And the narrative citation is something where the the name of the author is part of a sentence and then the year is in parentheses. So if you want to focus on the author or focus on a specific study, then a narrative citation will be better. If you just want to express a fact and then cite a source for that fact without going into details how that fact was established through an empirical study, for example, then you would use the parenthetical citation. Now, take a look at this for a moment and uh, is this plagiarism? When I asked this question in the class that I teach live, about half of the students say that this is plagiarism, other half says that this is not. And this is perhaps the most common form of plagiarism that I see. So this is plagiarism because uh, it's basically uh, the original text where just something has been taken away, something has been replaced with different words, and it, it's sentence for sentence, it's the same text just edited to be slightly different. So think about it this way, if I took the Harry Potter book and I changed the name of the main character and name of the book to be Tom Potter, that wouldn't make it my book. That's the same thing here, just taking someone text, somebody's text and, and editing it a bit to change some words doesn't make it your text, it's still text that is derived from the original source. So this is a very important thing to understand and you should never work like this. So always uh, write in your own words how you understood the text. Don't take the original words and try to make them look like they are your own. There are some guidelines in, in, uh, in citations and uh, one thing that students often struggle with and is the level of citation. So do I need to have a citation after every sentence? Do I need to have a citation at the end of the paragraph? And do I need to have a citation in the beginning of the paragraph? Do I need to have two citations for a fact or five citations? And there are over citation and under citation. Both are problem. So under citation means that you're not fully acknowledging the previous work. So you're taking facts without citing. That's plagiarism. 
and oversight this and it's a problem because it uh, reduces readability. If your text is just long string of citations, like I've seen some articles that I reviewed where for example introduction is like 130 citations. It's very difficult to read that citation heavy text and then I ask the authors to make it lighter. There are two things to understand about incruelic uh, citations. So there is mechanics, for example the APA user manual tells you uh, there is one, one chapter on the citation mechanics, like every possible thing that you could cite is explained there how you cite it. And then there's the, this principles. And the principles are a lot more important. Uh, the principle, first principle is that it should be clear uh, what is the source of all text. Is it uh, somebody else's idea in your words? Is it someone else's text or is it your ideas? And then uh, paragraphs should be cohesive and uncluttered. So avoid uh, over citation and then mechanics should be followed. If these rules are in conflict, the always the rule that has the lower number takes uh, precedence. Sometimes it's unavoidable to include a lot of citations, but including many citations uh, can also harm your style. So harm the simplicity. So try not to oversight. Let's take a look at examples. This paragraph is given in the APA user uh, the APA uh, publication manual as an example of a long paragraph, and we can see here that. A single citation would be sufficient for this long paragraph. And why that is the case? It is because it's clear from the context that this all comes from the same source. So what you can do is that you can introduce the author in the beginning of the paragraph and then you can refer to the authors like the authors or the author or he or she or that research founds. So you link back and you, you remind the reader that you're talking about, about this source. You don't need to have the citation at the end of uh, each sentence. That is completely unnecessary. You also don't need to have and you shouldn't have the citation at the end of the paragraph. If your uh, work is only based on, on, on one source, one paragraph, then you should tell that in the beginning of the citation using a narrative citation. Generally, whether you uh, refer to one source for, for more than one or two sentences, then it's typically easier to make the text um, cohesive and make clear about the source when you use narrative citations instead of parenthetical citations. Here's another example where uh, parenthetical citations are necessary. And even though this is based mostly on Elwood, there is some detail that comes from Robinson Kelly. And because there's detail that comes from another, another article, you have to hear again say that, well, this comes only from Elwood's work and only this one, this second point comes also from Robinson and Kelly. And so this is uh, here, sometimes it's necessary to have these multiple citations, often it is not. The important part about citations is mechanics. We have guidelines and then principles and the principles are more important than the mechanics. The first principle is that you need to acknowledge sources. The second principle is that your citations should be distracting. So minimum number of citations that still uh, satisfy the first principle is the sweet spot. Then about plagiarism, uh, many courses use the Turnitin system. So a few words about Turnitin. So Turnitin, uh, when, it, uh, when you have this teacher view, it shows us uh, the similarity percentage. And students often ask, my similarity is 30%. Is that a lot or a little? Well, the similarity can be high because there are uh, reference lists. Or if the student makes an assignment that repeats the assignment description, in the, uh, their submission and for many other reasons. We don't look at the percentage. Instead, we, we take a look at the detailed view and you can take a look at the detailed view yourself by clicking on this pencil icon. And in this detailed view, we can see here that uh, the, what, what actually is copied. So um, the detailed view then shows that, okay, so, so this, this seems to be directly copied from the book. And if I see this directly copied from the book in an assignment, then uh, that's going to be a failed assignment or failed course, depending on the context. Also, some teachers might give you feedback. So there is this grade mark functionality that you can uh, sometimes see being used on courses. So checking this third in reports is very useful because you can get feedback through it and you'll, get, uh, you'll see 
how the teacher sees your work. Finally, some tips to avoid plagiarism. Something that I think works for most people is uh, when you write your notes, write them in a non-English language. So if you have a, a, a document that you are going to write in English and your original source is in English, if you write your notes in Finnish and then write your document based on the notes and not the or original article, that eliminates the risk of original text ending up being presented as your text. If you keep your notes in English, keep notes in a separate document and never copy paste anything in the thesis document. So I have had uh, notes being converted to text uh, in, in one work that I was working on and it ended up that now we have a paper out there where a small part is plagiarized because of that. Uh, add a citation every time with quotes when you copy paste. So don't copy paste but if you do uh, make it a, a quotation and then uh, keep it as quotation unless you decide to rewrite it in original words. Then focus on the big picture. So if you focus on the big picture, like think about what are different themes that articles have in together, then that's generally a good idea. Then it's uh, much more difficult to plagiarize because none of those articles actually give you the big picture of all articles. So you have to develop in your own words.